um, six women got together in 1974 in Lynn Littman's living room and realized that even though they had an Oscar, an Emmy, and a Peabody between them, they could not get work. So they set upon to really take, for five years, they took all sorts of statistics that had not been taken before, which pointed out that 1% of the films were directed by women and 5% of TV was directed by women. And below the ranks, we were even, ADs were, were even, it was even worse in that department. No, not at all. Um, because I think we have more female students than we have male students. I think that inequality is a sad fact of life, and to say that we live in some sort of utopian school where sexism doesn't exist is just extremely unrealistic. I think that it's better here than it is most places, but it's not perfect. I think that one of the things that has really stood out to me is being in classes with male teachers who have really no concept of their privilege and you know I had a I had a certain teacher who would only ever show films directed by white men. When I was in college I took film classes and we had a history of cinema course and I was struck by the fact that out of a hundred films that we would be watching only one was directed by a woman, and that was in uh, 1984, I believe. How come I don't show more films by women in my 20th century film history course? Um, I point out to them that the few films that I do show are actually not even correct in terms of proportionality. Um, out of 32 films to show in a 100-year period, the majority really would belong to male filmmakers because percentage-wise, so few were actually made by female directors. In my experience here um, at, at Safwad, um, I would say about 75% of the sets that I've been on have been directed by male directors. It's weird, like when you're on set working, you don't realize that really, because it's all about work and you just want to achieve something. But looking back at it, like when you ask me this question, I feel like, wow, like that's kind of fucked up. <laughs> I mean, we do have a lot of girls too in this, in the film school. Duas semanas atrás, eu tava gravando um filme que se chama Nick, The Fish and Loneliness, and I, eu era a única mulher no set. Since freshman year, I've noticed it, um, but now it's more evident that that's really a thing. It's really prominent in the school. Um, I don't know how, though, because, I mean, I guess it, the statistic doesn't really matter. I don't think we, the men focus on the number. No conozco a tantas mujeres como, conozco más a hombres que mujeres. Este, las mujeres que conozco, este, apenas estoy empezando a conocerlas como Elia, como a Summer y ese tipo de personas, porque cuando estamos con los internacionales, los internacionales con los internacionales, y afortunadamente las cosas están cambiando. Pero de la gente que yo suelo trabajar con los internacionales, no hay tantos, tantas mujeres que ocupen cargos altos, pues. No hay tantas dirigiendo, no hay tantas produciendo cosas así. Usually, when I'm on set, um, there the crew is mostly men, and there may be one girl sprinkled in, um, if any at all. Oh, I don't. I have nothing against women, you know, but they feel like they should get a pat on the back because you know they put a girl on their team. It's like no, you don't. That's like you no know, searching for brownie points. You ever heard of that term? Yeah. Like. I've seen like millions of guys do that where I'm just like, that's not the right way to go about it. Like my whole thing, if I have an all guy crew, that's not because like I have anything against women, it's because they were the best candidates that I could pick. I think that men tend to find other men and then once that's your bro group, that's who you, that's who you make films with. Um, I don't think it's a like, oh, well, uh, I don't think women should be in film, so I'm not gonna hire women. I don't think it's that, it's more of a subconscious thing of, oh, well, I have my bro group and all of my bros can make films, so why not get them? And they just don't think to include women. Men respecting female authority, like definitely. 
a problem. Um, uh, men telling me how to do my job um, or not believing that I'm capable of doing it as well as other men. Eu já estive em sets que eu encontrei com pessoas, não todo mundo, mas que eu encontrei com pessoas que eram completamente preconceituosas e falavam que mulher não tinha que estar no set, que mulher não tinha que estar trabalhando, que a mulher tinha que estar em casa, na, na frente do fogão, fazendo comida e limpando a casa e cuidando das crianças, porque é para isso que elas servem. Eu acho que é um, é um absurdo, mas eu já ouvi isso e já fui muito maltratada aqui na faculdade por pessoas que pensam dessa maneira. I once was talking to a friend about it, and who is also very a good, like, filmmaker, and she was saying, "Well, I need to impose myself. I need to like feel uh, that people. I have to show like I can be respected. So I, for example, we dress differently. We put clothes that don't like show so much, and like your your body, you know, like more." Cover like we're on sweatpants and what well, once because it is comfortable, but also because we feel like if you're too girly and you're too like we put makeup on or stuff like that, maybe people are gonna respect you more less. Being on a crew and like wearing makeup or some kind of girly outfit, I mean, I would you know my outfit when I'm on a film set is you know jeans, turtleneck down vest, baseball cap, you want to blend in. When I was first getting into the technical side of film, I actually started as a directing major and found out that I really, really loved the technical aspects of film, um, specifically lights. And um, I felt like it was really hard to break into, break into that um, and get mentors um, to like help me learn all of all of those things, um, and so I, I think I'd like try to almost act a little more masculine. People assume that you have you cannot be that physical as guys do, especially let's say like group like uh, department people that carry weight, and they're physically strong. I was really afraid to be a part of. Um, be a part of the the technical end of film and be a part of um, dealing with the equipment and stuff like that um, because it's like kind of a it is a big like boys club um, and so I was really I was really afraid because I think just just be just because you see the equipment it looks big and scary and there are only men handling it um, and it's because like we are sort of we are just programmed that way Wait, there's a there's a girl in Genie. Like I've never seen this before. It's not that it was bad or anything. I'm just like I've never seen it happen. So Y cuando vienes aquí y te encuentras con que eres un grip y tienes que subir esto, tienes que bajar aquello. Ya lo hago yo porque tú te vas a lastimar, no tienes la fuerza correcta. Eso es cierto, o sea, yo es cierto, yo no tengo la fuerza correcta, o sea, yo no tengo la fuerza que puede tener otra persona, pero porque no me he ejercitado para ello. Pero ya se empieza a generar el, el cúmulo de, es que como es feminista o como es una niña, no puede subir esto, no puede bajar esto. Y lo peor es cuando las propias niñas nos ponemos en contra de las niñas. I don't know about other schools, but at this school there's a really strong group of women who are really amazingly talented. And, um, and we all sort of have this understanding of like, you know, women need to support women. Um, y recuerdo que que cuando uh, lo hice a uh, mis amigos que, que quería que me, que me apoyaran, o sea, les decía, yo solamente quiero hacer algo badass que demuestre que un crew de mujeres puede hacer este, algo más que, o sea, que lo típico. Um, y, y esa fue toda mi intención, o sea, y por eso ese, ese, ese proyecto lo hice con, o sea, un crew de mujeres, solamente tuve tres hombres en el set y no era por, por menospreciar, o sea, los hombres siempre se necesita el apoyo de, de los hombres, yo no, yo no creo en que, que las mujeres, o sea, lo podemos hacer todo eh, pero sí creo que en el en el, uh, en el área creativa no hay mucha diferencia 
entre un hombre y una mujer. O sea, creo que hay cosas que sí son... Sí hay una diferencia, por ejemplo, en el físico, eh, pero, pero hay posiciones en las que las mujeres este, son capaces, o sea, de realizar ese trabajo. Maybe we should learn more about those great female filmmakers or artists or anything, just like in class, maybe. In my advanced production class, you know, we talk about gender discrimination or racial discrimination or ageism, you know, whatever it is. Um, there's all kinds, uh, but because that class deals with the realities of the world and, and when you get out into the film industry world and what you may face. No, the faculty's not doing much to change. I mean, there's no conversations in class that are, hey, hire more women. That's never a conversation. Should it be a conversation? I don't know. Um, you know, how, how much is that, does putting pressure on people to do something different work? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. But as far as I can tell, no, that I've never had a conversation in class about gender inequality, unless it comes from a student. You know, I think that they can, they can look at the statistics and be like, okay, yeah, wow, like something needs to change, like hire more women or something. But it's so much deeper than that because it, it's this whole um, confidence, you know? Like I think that it really comes down to, you know, believing that what these young women have to say is of value and of importance. I know that uh, most recently in our Shoot the Stars production, in the fall of 2015, uh, both of the films that were created were helmed by female directors. Um, again, I've yet to have any students come up and say to me that this is an issue uh, at all. I would look into it uh, if I knew that it was. Um, but in all fairness, I, I would have to turn around and say, uh, perhaps it just might be the individual, regardless of the sex. The point is, is that I don't see a big injustice in the department, you know, of, of people prohibiting content creation by anybody. It's a matter of getting the work seen. I do think that there is a more concerted, focused effort to get it out of the school at the same time. It's kind of a, it's a natural bias. Natural, casual sexism has been institutionalized for decades. But I think because we're all aware of that, it's becoming more and more apparent that we need to get rid of it. So even though it's moved in here, especially in the more hands-on stuff like grips, especially grips, um, it is, it's like, there's more of a move to get it out of here as soon as possible. I think that we are growing as, as a school and we're growing as an industry and we're learning every day. So I think to a degree, um, faculty is working towards change. And I've worked with a lot of great people and a, a lot of um, great professors that are very interested in creating a better world and a better system for their students, no matter what gender. I think that subject is very sensitive in the school. So I personally would probably just, um, I, I guess just spread the word kind of thing, you know, I mean, as much as we can. and. I, because as more people understand it, then I feel like they'd be more open to these different um, roles that women can play. Es una industria muy muy difícil para para las mujeres y eso me molesta de sobremanera porque lo digo otra vez si tuviéramos a las mujeres 50 50 o hasta siquiera más la industria sería 10, 15, 50 veces mejor de lo que sea ahorita, porque ahorita tiene muchos problemas. Y lo que yo haría sería empezar a darle, darle prioridad a las mujeres, darle prioridad a que ellas se, se demuestren al mundo que pueden hacerlo mucho mejor que nosotros. Well, don't give up. It is hard, it's difficult, don't give up. Uh, don't let these things get on your way. It's hard sometimes, sometimes. You feel like this is not fair. It seems like it's impossible, but I think what it really comes down to is, again, just like understanding that even if your film doesn't reach a million people, even if, you know, the industry isn't going to support you in that way, if you're doing what's authentic to yourself and what you know is like true to your art, You'll be changing yourself and you'll be changing the people around you that you meet and you learn to love. You'll be working with these collaborators 
and empowering them to find what's authentic to themselves. And, you know, in that way, like it starts small and then those people are gonna work with other people. And I think that that's really, you know, in this like small interpersonal way that, that we can not give up on ourselves. And, and that's what will be the most powerful way to change the whole industry, I think. I am a storyteller. I am a writer and a director. Eu sou uma assistente de direção. Eu sou produtora. I am a director. Sou diretora. A director. A director. A director. Sou um director. I am a gaffer. I am a producer. I am a cinematographer. I'm a production designer. Diretora de arte. Uma diretora de arte. I'm a screenwriter. I am a feminist. And we are the future. <laughs>